I'd like to apologize for the video. It's going to be all over the place because most of it was filmed kind of late while I was working on the saw. And sometimes my brain and my mouth don't get along that well uh, when it's later than I'm typically running around. Almost forgot to start video on before I start, uh, got too far. This is the 7310 cylinder. This is going to be take two of uh, the, you know, my original one ran pretty good. I still got the cylinder for it, but, uh, I think there's more power left in this cylinder. So, I got a new one. I got 30 thousandths off the base. I'm going to start out by gasket matching everything. Uh, taper that in a little bit there's a step in your primary on the back you can kind of see it there I'm gonna try to blend that in to the transfer cap and I don't think that's changing that's essentially a bottleneck but if you swoop that back toward the cap there's a hump in there that helps direct flow as well so I don't think that would hurt it going from you know here to a bigger hole and then I'm gonna uh, relieve the skirts out all the way to the edge as well uh, okay you kinda see my gasket matching everything's blended in on the bottom now I'm almost done with lower work um, the big difference between the way I did the lowers on this one and the way I did them on my last one is I'm going in here and you can see everything is pretty blended into that wall and on the other side there's still a massive step in there now the one on the step on the outside is what I'm getting rid of. That hump on the inside, that has a lot to do with directing airflow through that transfer, so you want to leave that alone. And if that wasn't there, I wouldn't worry about that step, but I think it could be detrimental because um, really now that's about the same size all the way down until you get to that hump and then it pushes the air back and around it but I'm just blending in uh, blending everything in from here still have to get that step out of this side and then put the cylinder on the saw I was cleaning up the piston I think I'm just gonna reuse the old one there ain't nothing wrong with it and it's you know, I've got maybe 10 tanks of fuel on it. It's ridiculous. i got a serious issue where I like tinkering with stuff. and This is the most horsepower I can get for my dollar, so... You know, play with chainsaws. Should have got, got started on clone saws, but... Oh well, I work for an Echo dealer, so... Might as well rep what we sell and the camera always makes it look ugly but it's pretty well matched together um, and just as a side note the only reason I took that out is because I think it'd be a massive hindrance to flow um, yeah, a bigger transfer is not always better if it's got a huge step in it, yeah, you might take that out, but uh, typically I try not to go too big on my transfers because it's, you know, the more material you remove out of there, the more degrees you, of uh, crankcase compression you're probably going to need to run. And I don't know that for a fact, but that's just theory in my head right now, so... Um, this scenario I think it was beneficial to remove that um, others probably not so much and you know I didn't make the holes much bigger 
like here you can see I just tapered everything in um, you know on the secondaries I tapered everything in now I'm done with the lower work on here you know relieve these skirts to where they you have full flow to the transfers um, took the step out of that back wall in these so hopefully it'll flow better uh, tapered everything in leaving that this little bridge here I just tapered it in toward the secondary left it flat over here this one little hole feeds both of those ports you got more port area and at a steeper angle than you do with your transfer uh, your primary that's probably well I don't know why they separated them so much but on these transfers I'm gonna uh, whenever I do my upper work I'm gonna do something strange I'm gonna try to fire this back one a couple degrees before the center one because you just have a straight shot from your lower transfer on your secondary to your uh, to that secondary so hardly anything comes out of there and if you pop that cap off you have a straight shot and then a hard right turn so I just don't think that's beneficial to flow at all so we're going to fire that rear one um, well the one closest to the intake first then I'm going to fire well, if you're looking at the whole sit situation I'm sorry I'm kind of rambling on here fire the primary first if you fire these first it kind of sucks in spent exhaust when it goes to loop scavenge and that's just not an optimal scenario for power production fire the primary starts to loop scavenge pushing all your fuel air mix toward the intake side which in turn you know you're there's already suction from the exhaust or I don't know if it's suction or if there's just pressure escaping through the exhaust so everything in that chamber is trying to pull that way that's why you want to fire the secondary the opposite direction it I mean the prime you want to fire the primary the opposite direction that everything's trying to flow uh, that's part of the loop scavenge in, in this engine from there I want to fire that intake side secondary and then so primary intake side secondary middle secondary that's the plan will it work that way I don't know we'll see when I get to start grinding on it alright here's got things laid out 104 exhaust 123 primary 126 on the far secondary and leaving that one alone it's going to give a pretty large gap between everything um, you know it may run like crap but oh well I can always go back into it because these are pretty conservative it's not pushing everything as far as it can go like that's pretty low for the exhaust on a 70cc saw these transfers are pretty low um, my last one was one like 119, 100, and 124, 125 on both of those. Uh, but those are pointed all funky on my last one. I, I want to straighten that out here because I think think we can do better. Uh, just push a ring in there and mark things out with the fine tip sharpie. You see the difference between 126 and 123 is about two widths of a fine point sharpie pin, which I think is, I don't know the tip thickness on these, I think it's like 0.7 millimeter or something.
here's the time on the pecan uh, test cut. That's current numbers on there. They're all kinds of jacked up and I left. I just wanted to make sure I had room to change things around if I didn't like this. And it actually ran pretty good. It ran about as good as the old one, which was uh, 80, 119, 124, and uh, with a 100 exhaust, 100 exhaust roof. This is a 106 exhaust roof, and still bangs on the rev limiter and pulls around 10.5 in the cut. Uh, so I think if I took that to like 104, it uh, it'd be a little bit peppier, and I think I still have like way like all kinds of room to play with these secondaries. Um, maybe even push that primary up a hair, but I might leave it where it's at uh, as well. But for for now, I'm just leaving it alone. Um, I mean, it runs great, uh, but. I still have room to go. That cylinder I pushed to the point where I, you know, painted myself into a corner, so to speak. Here I chose a decent starting point uh, and can change my mind. But ran 15 seconds in its best cut. That's uh, is a little bit smaller than the last piece that I was cutting in but the old time on the other piece was 16 seconds so call it you know if it's one or two either way that's enough you know that's my margin of error uh, but you know I don't think I slowed it down hun and with a you know with conservative port work that's like hey I still have room to grow